Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. We start with a breaking news alert. Fargo police are looking for a man who allegedly robbed a liquor store at gunpoint. Hi everyone and thank you for joining us. I'm Jordan Schreer. Officials say it happened last night around 1130 at Royal Liquors on Main Avenue. Police say the man threatened two employees with a gun and then took cash from the register before running off. When officers arrived, a canine track was done, but the suspect wasn't found. Now that suspect is described as a black man between 5'8 and 6 feet tall, wearing dark clothing. Police say if you have any information about him, give them a call. That number's up on your screen right now. New at noon, a 19-year-old woman is recovering after being shot in Barnes County. Officials say it happened this morning in the Fingal area. When deputies arrived on scene, they arrested a woman on an outstanding warrant connected to an unrelated incident. That victim was taken to Mercy Hospital, where she is expected to make a full recovery. Deputies say the shooting remains under investigation. Taking that live look outside right now, well, it's gloomy again today, but you do notice the difference in temperature from where we've been the past few days. For what we can expect on our Friday and into the weekend, let's check in with meteorologist Lisa Green. That's right, we've warmed things up a little bit for us today. Starting this morning, it was pretty mild, but some of us hovering right around the freezing mark, and we've been getting some precipitation. So that's led to some slick spots on the roads. We've had a little mist, a little drizzle out there, and now some snow showing up on the radar, especially in eastern North Dakota. So please be careful as you're out driving today. There's likely some slick spots, and as these areas of snow move through, your visibility is going to be reduced as well. Zooming in a little more, you can see we've got kind of a changeover trying to happen around Lisbon and Gwinter, and then between Jamestown and Valley City, another little pocket of snow. And even in the western part of the FM Metro, we've got some precipitation showing up. We're going to zoom in on over by West Fargo and at Mapleton, seeing some of that dropping to the southeast toward Horace. And so watch out for a little snowflakes or perhaps even just some drizzle coming down with that one. So again, overall, we have the potential for more snow scattered snow showers throughout the rest of the afternoon and temperatures that are milder than they have been in recent days. We'll be at 38 when you step outside right now in Fargo. It's 40 in Sisseton. It's 36 currently in Grand Forks. And those chances for snow and perhaps a little drizzle mixed in will continue this afternoon. So more on that coming up as we head through the rest of your day today. We'll also take a look at that weekend forecast too in just a few minutes. Look forward to it. Thank you, Lisa. Multiple people are sitting in jail this afternoon for drug-related charges after a bust in Carrington. The Foster County Sheriff's Department says multiple agencies conducted the bust on the north side of town on Wednesday. Police arrested Brian Wagner, Tyler Hahn, Jeffrey Hulbert, and Yvette Howell for multiple charges. They were all taken to the Stutzman County Jail. Let's take a look now at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say 39-year-old Amanda Berkey is wanted for possession of a controlled substance. Her picture's up on your screen. Call your local law enforcement if you have any information about her. One man is dead after a side after sideswiping another car and then crashing into a tree in northern Minnesota. The state patrol says a 43-year-old Twin Cities man lost control of his pickup on Highway 84 south of Longville last night, hit a vehicle coming from the other direction, left the road and then hit a tree. The 70-year-old driver in the other pickup was not hurt. Another stretch of 52nd Avenue South in Fargo is reopening today. Roadblocks are coming down from one lane between Veterans Boulevard and 63rd Street. The remaining lanes will reopen within the next two weeks. Various speed limits will be posted along 52nd, so if you travel that road, keep an eye out for those. British police are now urging two suspects in the death of 39 people found in a truck container to turn themselves in. An Essex police detective used a news conference in Northern Ireland today to urge the suspects who are brothers to surrender to police. Ronan and Christopher Hughes are being sought by police for questioning about possible links to the grim discovery of 39 bodies in a trucking container in southeastern England on October 23rd. Police say they have already spoke to Ronan Hughes by telephone, but they want to talk to the two of them in person. The ISIS militant group has announced a new leader to succeed Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, who was killed in a U.S.-led raid in Syria last weekend. Kier Simmons reports. 
After the dramatic US raid on Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi's compound, this morning, ISIS confirming the death of its leader and announcing his successor. The name of the new terror leader, Abu Ibrahim Hashimi al Qureshi. Western intelligence agencies now racing to identify just who he is. Officials saying he may be a former senior ISIS leader who once helped lead a branch of al-Qaeda. Across Europe, security services on alert today, fearing ISIS cells may look for revenge. They will accelerate operations they have in the pipeline, particularly targeting Europe, I would guess. And I would be very concerned as the holiday season comes on here, those beautiful Christmas markets. While the general in charge of the military coalition in Syria and Iraq says the fight against ISIS, or Daesh, is far from over. The mission itself hasn't changed in eastern Syria. There are still presence of Daesh there. But ISIS is weakened. Many of its fighters dead or imprisoned. Intelligence officers that I speak to talk about capability and intent. Clearly, ISIS's capability is much reduced. But what it's trying to say with this message is that its intent to target the US and the West remains just as strong. Keir Simmons, NBC News, London. According to officials, Baghdadi's remains were buried at sea shortly after his death. Be sure to wake up early on Sunday and catch Full Court Press with Greta Van Susteren this week. The show will feature an interview with House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. You can expect Greta will be discussing the impeachment investigation. For a quid pro quo, one, I, one party would have to do something for the other party's action. None of that had taken place. And the only reason I'm bringing this up, because Adam Schiff lied to the American public and said that was the case. Full Court Press airs at 6.30 Sunday morning on KVLY. In our consumer alert this afternoon, Chick-fil-A has issued an apology. The fast food chain sent a promotion to its loyalty program members about National Sandwich Day, which is November 3rd. That happens to fall on a Sunday. However, all Chick-fil-A's are closed on Sundays. But Popeye's is taking advantage of the faux pas. Its chicken sandwich, which smashed sales forecasts, drew long lines and sold out and even prompted a lawsuit, returns on Sunday. Popeye's notes that they are open on those days. And a reminder to join us this Saturday for the Farmers Union Insurance Bison football pregame show. Coverage starts at 4 in the afternoon. Kickoff to follow at 5. The game is between the Bison and the Penguins. And you can watch the game on ESPN+.